You know, I searched for Saint Germain for five years before I found him. It was an amazing experience in my life because when I was 18, I was leaving home to go to college and I knew I wasn't coming back, so I made a call to God and I said, I thanked him for my home and my parents and I said, if there's anything you have placed here for me of which I have not availed myself, please tell me because I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. And so God spoke to me, resounding in my temple and said, go to the library, pick up the book, Unveiled Mysteries, and read it. And so this was a book, actually I think the name of the book was the third in the series of I Am books, it was the I Am Discourses. Because I had remembered seeing that book all my life as a child and I thought it had a very kind of a foreboding title that I wouldn't understand. So I obeyed God and I took the book and I thought I was in for something very deep. So I settled into an old leather chair and I put my legs over the side of the chair, opened the book and I saw this portrait of Saint Germain that we have here, that very picture. And as I looked at him, I was completely electrified. I, I leapt up out of the chair. I ran to my mother and I said, here, look. Here is Saint-Germain. Have you ever seen him? Do you know him? And she said, yes, I know him. And I said, why haven't you ever told me about him? And she said, I wanted you to find him for yourself. So there I was. I was off to college. I took the book, hopped on the train the next day, went out in the Midwest from New Jersey where I grew up. Five years I spent looking for Saint-Germain. I couldn't find Saint Germain, I couldn't find a living soul who had ever heard of Saint Germain. And I thought it was a very perplexing experience. So I went to New York City after I started going that, from there to Boston University. And I combed the old bookstores and I looked in the secondhand stores and I found some decrees that had been published by this IM organization, which I knew nothing about. And it was a little booklet of affirmations containing affirmations of the violet flame. And although I had been a student of metaphysics, I had studied unity, Christian science, I had read the Bible, I knew a great deal of truth beyond the, the usual form of religion, I had never given a powerful affirmation except about three times in my life when I called to God, and on each occasion I had noted that my prayer was answered instantaneously and I was almost dumbfounded by this experience. Three desperate situations I had had, and each one I made a call to God uh, to come forth and help me, and instantaneously uh, that help had been forthcoming. So I took note of that, but I never did understand it. I couldn't understand why the action was so immediate, as opposed to simple prayer. So I got this book of old decrees. I was in New York, went back to Boston, and I began giving them. And as I gave them, my voice became more powerful just in the giving of the decrees. It was a matter of weeks that Mark Prophet came to Boston, sent by Al Moria, uh, to give a dictation in uh, a group of Ascended Master students that had formed there. Within those same weeks, by a very roundabout way, I made contact with someone who knew of that group from the time I began giving the violet flame, my whole life was turned around. So I began to understand that without the word was not anything made that was made. And I realized that all of my searching and longing for five years did not bear fruit because I was not applying the science of cosmos. I realized that the power of the word within us is the power of change and that we were created by Elohim who created and framed the worlds who gave us the, the gift of the spoken word. And when we use it with the authority of God rather than the human authority or the human will, but when we allow God to speak through us, molecules and atoms of the earth literally do change. So since that hour, I have found that the decrees, the violet flame in particular, and all that we have to offer has completely changed my life. I have become a new creature many times over 
Saint Germain has taken me back through my incarnations. When you give the violet flame, you're working on the balancing of karma, and you start with your present today. Today's misqualified energy is transmuted, and then yesterday's, and then last week's, and last year's. And you go through the months, and you go through the years, and as you decree, you're going back and back and back until you find yourself actually experiencing embodiments 250,000 years ago. You start remembering being part of the race consciousness, even of a primitive evolution that was on the earth, whether or not you were embodied in it or not. You go through the whole consciousness of earth's evolutions. If any of you have ever read Blavatsky, you know the very complex um, unfoldment she has of the history of earth. So I've found that if you are diligently working with the violet flame, at least in my case, being sponsored by the master, which is very important because we all need the guru, that in about a six-month period of earnest striving, prayer, fasting, and decrees, you can go through the karma of one lifetime. So I found that periodically, about every six months, I would come into the next previous embodiment as Saint Germain would reveal it, I would see my mistakes and shortcomings. I would see my triumphs, the tragedies, the inanities, the mediocrities, all of the things that we go through in our lifetimes. And I would study them. He would show me uh, how we have to turn our weaknesses into strengths, how we need to, to really know what our strengths are, capitalize on them, and use them uh, to help to set life free. So it's been an amazing experience. I have never been psychically regressed. Uh, the master does not use hypnosis. It's through the Christ mind, through your own being, you come into that awareness. I know many people in California and around the world have successfully used these methods for want of any other. Uh, the only problem with probing the past before you come to it logically in the sequence of decrees is that you can open a can of worms that you're not ready for. Many people bump into their past embodiments and they become emotionally distraught with what they are seeing and with the problems they may have had with persons that they are now dealing with or persons unknown. So it is uh, a road to be approached with great respect and reverence. And we don't like to take heaven by force, but we know that as we give the violet flame, scenes begin to pass through the memory, through the inner eye, and through the mind. And those scenes usually begin with long forgotten episodes of your present embodiment. And when you see them, it is not the, that they are being recreated, it is that they are flashing before you as they are going into the flame. So if you come to something unpleasant, the thing to do is to intensify the calls to the violet flame and keep on going. And you understand that the violet flame only transmutes that which is unreal or unworthy of your Christhood. Everything else ascends to that causal body and is preserved forever. All of your good words and good works, all of your fine creations, all of your loves that have been pure in God, everything that is exalted, everything that we would want to keep in heaven is already in heaven because that which is good ascends immediately. Our good works go before us to heaven as a testimony to the angels and to God that we are coming home. So our causal bodies grow and grow and grow uh, with the decrees we give and with all the service to life and the, the wonderful experiences we have. So the sacred fire doesn't take anything from us but the debris, and it refines and purifies what is good, and it leaves us free and unencumbered to do what we have to do at hand. So many people are walking around today heavy, weighted down, weighted physically. They feel dense. They feel like they don't have any get up and go, any push. And it's karma. It's the weight of past lives. And Saint Germain is such a lover of your soul. He so intensely desires you to make it in the full flame of freedom of the seventh ray. And he devised the violet flame and went before cosmic councils for a dispensation to give it to the evolutions of Earth. They warned him that mankind would misuse the violet flame and use it to their own selfish purposes. He said, I will pay the price. I will bear the karma for the misuse of the violet flame, but I want the people to have it. So with the coming of Saint Germain's dispensation for the Aquarian age, we had the, the sponsorship of America. You have the sponsorship of Australia. 
and many freedom movements have come forth. His aura, his presence. This master, if you can really comprehend the meaning of the master, is so profound and has such attainment, his aura fills the planet. And he does keep the action of freedom in every type of situation, be it education or science. As you know, he is the father of that science. But the violet flame is the key to action. We have a lot of people today who like to talk about things, even politics has become metaphysical. We are seized with our theories. We think we know the way things should be done, but they don't stand the test of practical action. They don't work. The violet flame sees to it that we are charged with what works. What works is what is right as long as its purpose is to glorify God in you and Christ in all people. So the violet flame is like that that whistle, that, that uh, tremendous wind of the Holy Spirit that takes from us everything else but what is necessary to get this world in shape. So I want to tell you from my personal experience, I know all of you have an intense desiring of your heart to do more for people, for life, to become more of who you are. And I know what that desiring is, and I know you wouldn't be here if you didn't have it. And the step the giant step into the path of really the masterful presence of your godhood, the giant step into the great white brotherhood from the former to the new age is the violet flame. So let's do it. The proof is in the pudding. I commend you to the great joy of this practice daily. Remember when you say, I am, you're saying, God in me is. This is page two, I am the violet flame. I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. That's three ways to give that decree. It's your choice. They're all correct. Just depends on building a momentum. I'm using a funnel of air from the seat of the soul chakra up to my throat chakra to give this decree. The power is the power of all of my chakras, all seven, at work simultaneously, releasing that sacred fire in the focus of the spoken word. I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. I have the mantra, I am a being of violet fire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desires. Then we have the lovely God presence, violet flame decree, more violet fire, page six. This has a very special rhythm. The power of this decree is in the spoken word and the rhythm. Loving and presence I am in me, hear me now, I do decree, renew past each blessing for which I call upon the Holy Christ self of each and all. Let violet fire of freedom roll round the world to make all hope, saturate the earth and its people too, with increasing Christ's radiance shining through. 
I am the second from God above, sustained by the hand of heavens, love transmuting the causes of discord, hearing, moving the course of the done new fear. I am, I am, I am the full power of freedom's love, raising all earth to heaven above. Violet fire now blazing bright in living beauty is God's own light, which right now and forever sets the world, myself and all life eternally free and ascended master perfection. Almighty I am, almighty I am, almighty I am. Loving of as I am in me, hear me now, I do decree, but a blessing, but thing for which I call upon the Holy Ghost, self of each and all. Let violet fire of freedom roll round the world to make all whole, saturate the earth and his people too, with increasing Christ radiance shining through. I am the second from God above, sustained by the hand of heaven, so transmuting the causes of discord, here, removing the course of the none fear. I am, I am, I am the full power of freedom, of raising all the two heaven above, violet fire now blazing bright in living beauty as God's own light. Which right now and forever sets the world, myself and all life eternally free in a center master perfection. Almighty I am, Almighty I am, Almighty I am. Loving your presence, I am in me, in me now, I need a great man of mercy, blessing, which I call upon the Lord, because of my vision, all. Let my divine remain, I'm rolling around the world, and bring God home, such a great man of mercy, blessing, which I call upon the Lord, and bring God home, such a great man of mercy, blessing, which I call upon the Lord, and bring God home, such a great man of mercy, blessing, which I call upon the Lord, and bring God home, such a great man of mercy, blessing, which I call upon the Lord, and Which right now in the river, 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 Now, when you've given that decree 10,000 times, you might like to give it back quickly. <laughs> you know, you do have your own clock. And you know what determines the clock, the inner clock of your being? It's actually the rate of the spin of the electron around the atom. You see, our, our atoms are clogged with our own karma, our own misqualified energy, our own consciousness. And so the violet flame penetrates every atom and cell of our being. And as it transmutes that substance, which is like concrete, it's actually like molasses, it gets so heavy and sticky. As it is transmuted, the electrons begin to spin, they throw off into the flame, the impurity, you feel lighter, uh, you put behind you old ways of thinking, old ways of feeling, your diseases, you become younger, you become rejuvenated, and you'd be amazed how great you feel. And you find that your thinking process is stepped up, you actually are functioning more quickly than many people around you. And uh, if you haven't seen some people you, you know for 10 or 20 years, you can gauge by where you are and where they are that really, in some cases, the world is standing still and you're accelerating into the seventh dimension. And it's very noticeable when you give this flame.